everybody and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, this weekend I'm off to Buxton in the Peak District and a number of people will be coming out to meet us and if you're one of the ones that can't make it, I've made this especially for you. Um, when I'm down there I normally give people a sheet that has all of the sightings that are in the area and I explain a little bit about the area, the terrain and people go off and they have a look in the woods. Um, and if you can't join us, I'm hoping that you will be interested in what I have to say. If you would like a written copy of these notes, just let me know in email and I can pop you a printable link over. Um, I'll post them out to you, whatever suits you best. And it gives a small snapshot of the area and what's happening around it. And I think the rivers are the key to this one. But let's go back to the beginning. Now, the wood wolves and the wild man have been reported here in the UK since the very first century. They're actually mentioned in the Albina tales of Albina and her sisters, for anyone who wants to know the tale. Just look up Britannia and her giants, and it gives them um, a very good history of the reports and the dates as they spread across the centuries. There is mention of them by the Gauls in, um, the, I think it was the early fourth century. Caesar mentions them in the diary. I think it was Pliny the Younger, I think, that wrote about them. Um, very different names, but hairy men that live within the woods that vanished and appeared at will. So, as I say, we were used to that from the very first century and we have the green man, obviously, don't we, and the wood wolves, as we mentioned before, and the hunter, all manner of names, really. Um, and if you pick between them and turn the noise down quietly, it's somebody who lives in the woods. It's very large, a, a commanding figure that is almost a caretaker or will scare you out of the woods, depending on what your opinion is on the stories. And as I say, they were very first written about in the first century, but you had to be incredibly rich back then to write anything. And normally the tales would pass from mouth to mouth. Now, there are very sparse newspaper reports, even in today's time. So let alone 130 years ago. But in 1865, there was a report made to the police by several villages villagers, sorry, in a small village within the Dales. And this ha actually happened between Matlock, um, E. Dale and Tideswell, Batewell, that kind of area, along the wire there and along the Derwent. Um, and as I said, the earliest magazine that reports it is a gentleman's magazine that came out in 1865. And it gives the full report um, by the police officers and it shows um, photographs of the actual structure that was found and photographed and you'll see some of that as, as we're scrolling through. Now, another gentleman named Joe Adam picked the story up in the October of 1904 and that's where we get this very detailed report from. Now, the article describes how many of the people who lived in, the, in Derbyshire had to deal with a so-called wild man of the woods. He was an extraordinary being, as they put it, who apparently wanted to live in a primitive way and just to be left alone. Now, as uh, Joe Adam wrote this transcript, this is not in uh, my writing, it's very flowery, but you just have to bear with it. Travelling by train to Bakewell is a delight when emerging from the station. You come upon a small bridge which crosses the railway line there and there are some extensive grassy slopes. Uh, these are the golf links which skirt the length of the railway and they stretch for miles to Matlock. Alongside these links are many rocky outcrops, which are inaccessible unless you stick to the path that runs through the wood. But when trying to walk off this path, the undergrowth of bracken is so thick that it's impossible to penetrate. There are several old stone quarries in the woods, and where the ground is comparatively clear, it is much broken up with boulders. On the outskirts of the wood is a reservoir, which supplies the village with water. One Friday in spring, some certain young ladies were enjoying the delights of a round of golf on the Bakewell links. Now, nobody ever gave the name of these ladies because they were very high class and they came from one of the large houses in the area. And there have been hints over time that the ladies were actually from Chatsworth House. Now, this is mere speculation as the name of the estate was removed from the report. As the ladies were playing golf, they were stunned to see a wild, hairy, man-like creature that came running from the woods and chased them down the hill. 
and he was making loud grunting sounds and whooping noises as he ran. And he must have realised that he'd scared them or he'd come too far out of his comfort zone because he suddenly turned tail and ran back into the woods. And as I said, this was reported not only to the golf club but to the local constabulary. This also happened on two more occasions where another set of ladies were on the same golf links at the same part of the course and a wild man emerged from the woods and chased them down they went back to um the clubhouse i suppose you would call it and a number of young men came out and chased the said figure across the woods and they couldn't catch him um and he was again making loud grunted noises so the police and the young men from the village decided to set out and capture this creature and when they were searching they were out in the woods and there was about 60 of them at the time. A young boy ran into the local police station and explained that he had just seen a wild man bathing up in the local reservoir. So the police and the 60 men set off in pursuit. They actually had blunderbusses with them and a number of um, other homemade weapons. And, and even though they saw the creature and they all could, could see his light moving within the woods along the peaks, they could not keep up, up with him. It was the same as the earlier gentleman from the golf course said that he just went up the peaks like it was nothing to him, using the trees and the rocks to aid his way. They did find his hut with the remains of a coal fire within it, and this is said hut. Now, if you're watching this in the podcast, it is the actual um, thumbnail for the podcast, and I've added on the ones that we can match it with from now so you'll see that when you look at it, you'll understand so this is the original image and i'm going to blow it up a little bit for everybody so you can see it nothing to write home about um you know not very large or anything like that and it just seems to be a number of sticks let's have a count one two three four five six lent up against a tree and i would imagine um as it does state in the the long article and you can access that actually on the bigfoot map just look for british bigfoot map and it'll pop up um and it says that it was covered in bracken and just debris so just your typical debris factor but you actually we found more of them i asked some members of uh bbi if they had anything like that in their area and as you can see they're very very similar uh they belong similar this is taken in wales in 2018 and this one was taken in northumberland in 2017 um and they're very very distinctive to the one that's here that's mentioned here and this is the original um report let me see if i can blow that up a little bit for you and we can get that title what does it say no i can't it says the remains of the wild man's hut from a photo by W.S. Campbell. So he must have been the photographer on the field at, on that day. Now, I have written to the police museum in London. I also wrote to the one in Manchester. I never heard anything back. So if you know any more of this story and can add to it, please get in touch and let me know. Now, another very famous case happened not too far away, and that was at the Lady Bower Reservoir. And a number of people saw a strange what they described as a biped up on the hill there now the johnson family were very brave and they actually reported it and as i said it was in 1991 and one terrified family believed they had a close encounter with a british bigfoot type creature near the lady bower reservoir the johnsons were among a number of motorists who had to stop in the road as there was a creature up on the hill distracting the other drivers they actually said as they were driving down the road they noticed that a car had stopped in front of them they got out of the car went to speak to the driver to see if there was a problem and they could help and all of the people in the car were looking up the hill so they looked up the hill also and they described a large hair covered biped on the hillside the biped stood a whopping eight foot tall and they described it as having human-like eyes a human shape but the whole body was covered in dark brown hair. Behind them, another car stopped, obviously wanting to know what all the fuss was about and the road was blocked. Seeing the strange creature up on the hill everybody else was looking at, for some reason they honked their horn. Now this sound startled the figure and it bolted down the hill, over the road in front of them, jumped over the edge of the bridge and there was a 10 foot drop over the other side of the bridge and the creature made it down there, not a problem. The Johnsons very bravely drove closer 
and stopped watching closely as the Bigfoot ran up the hillside on the opposite bank, running among the trees. They said the shape of the face, the eyes and the body was normal, no different to ours. However, it did walk differently, like it was crouching as it ran. Now, we've heard the habits displayed by the Bigfoot creatures that we're just speaking about over and over again. They're running off when confronted, the shying away from humans, using its strength and prowess to manoeuvre at will over some very harsh terrain. The crouched posture, some people called it hunch, some people call it slouch. One lady called it a, a, like a hunchback creature. So it's this bent over forward. You also get reports of them moving very easily on down on all fours or up on two legs whatever makes it easiest for them to keep moving then that's what they will do so they must be very athletic i would imagine is the word for it i'm sure there are much better ones so as i said the reports in the newspapers are very very rare but the london daily express in october 14th of 1925 made a report from the district of edale in derbyshire of something black in color an enormous of size that was slaughtering sheep at night and leaving the carcasses strewn about with legs, shoulders and heads torn off, broken backs and pieces of flesh ripped off the bodies. Now many hunting parties have gone out in search of the beast, but they were unable to track the animal. People in many places across the dale refuse to leave their homes after dark and families are keeping their children safe in the house at all times. The locals believe it's a werewolf and there are many accounts still to this day of livestock being killed or taken. Animal mutilations are rife with many of the farmers reporting the problems to local authorities. Many of the deaths are put down to poachers or local dogs. But some of these kill kills have peeled faces. Bellies that are sliced down the middle with only the liver taken out. Now, this is one of the images and it is quite graphic um, and so much so, it happens so often that they actually call it the uh, Moreland Beast. Just a second while I insert this image. I must have forgotten, you're just going to have to bear with me a second, sorry about this. Here is a particular image and it actually shows, it shows um, a sheep that is completely in half. There is no blood on the ground. There's no footprints or paw prints or any mark on the carcass of anything. There's no human prints. It's a completely clean kill, you would say. A completely clean scene. Very unusual. Uh, I've seen them with the spine ripped out. Many, many occasions where just the back legs are taken, like here. And as you can see from this picture here, this is Canic Chase. This is Nottingham and Sherwood Forest area, and you've got Lynx and Leicestershire this way, and the Yorkshire Dales and the Wolves that way. You've got the Forest of Boland here. These are the Manchester accounts, which skirts around Manchester. And if you can go anywhere from this area using any of the number of rivers that flow through and join up and converge at these points. And um, you get lots of outdoors people that send reports in it's not always um visiting campers alex is an avid outdoorsman and a wild camper and he spends a lot of time in the area and he knows it well he actually goes out and collects deer um antlers and things like that and an interesting things from the woods and brings them back and he says i'll visit the area often as i collect deer antlers and i was up in my normal spot when i heard wood knocking coming from below me in the area i'd just been Distinct, clear knocking. I had binos, so I scanned the area but saw nothing. I clapped and received a mirrored reply. I visited the area over a number of occasions and I even took my sister with me and the same thing happened each time. Now, as Alex described it to me, he said that you had to go off path, you had to go down a steep ravine, cross over the river, up the other side of the very steep ravine, and that would put you on um, the logging trail there. And he would look on either side with the logging trail for deer antler. Uh, he said the areas are to now access. You have to walk into the vegetation, go down the ravine, across the river, up a steep bank, and to re you reach the logging road. And as I'm walking along the road, it gives a very good vantage point for viewing the valley below. 
So when he was here in the Woodnocks, he actually scanned below with his binos and he said there was no workmen, no loggers, no machinery, no people, couldn't see anything. And as I said, this happened over a number of occasions. And if I'm right in thinking, I'm sure that at one point he had um, a tree limb thrown at him, but I would have to check back in with him um, to be 100% on that. Another gentleman who does the very same thing is normally out and about in the countryside said, I encountered a big foot type creature last summer. It's the only thing I can think of to call it, as that's exactly what it looked like. And he's actually speaking of the summer of 2018. I was walking on top of a hill near the local golf course and I spotted a dark hairy figure that was all one colour and it moved across the side of the hill. It moved through the long grass on the side and it disappeared quickly out of sight. It wasn't a cat or a dog or a badger. It happened during the afternoon in good light. There was no one else around other than myself at the time and I had not seen anyone on my walk. I also heard some strange grunt sounds coming from trees and bushes nearby to where I last lost sight of it. So I walked away and I haven't been to the area since. I can't give you much info because I only saw it for a matter of seconds. The way it moved was strange. It wasn't very big. It seemed to be crouching down as it moved. It looked about the size of a human. Its fur was black and it moved very fluently. So there we go again, this crouching down creature this fluid movement as it moves obstacles don't seem to be a problem not massive each of these witnesses are saying something along the lines it wasn't very big it moved very fluently it looked about the size of a human its fur was all black in color and these are all in the same area they all mention the golf courses why i don't know but they come up time and time again the River Dove creature, the River Dove is one of the rivers that runs through this area. It meets up with the River Way and the Derwent. Um, somewhere between the years of 2006 to 2008, I was returning to Dovedale in Derbyshire, said the gentleman. I'm walking along the fields that side of the River Dove. It was broad daylight, but I had no binoculars on me and I was just walking along. One field away from me, on the other side of a five to six foot hedge, I saw an unmistakable large grey creature, which was approximately seven to nine feet tall. I could clearly see half of it visible above the hedge, leading me to believe that it was bipedal, as it seemed to be upright and walking on two legs. At the time, I tried to think of a logical explanation for what it could be, thinking of the normal animals seen around here. The only thing I can come up with was one cow on two legs, standing on top of another cow on two legs, on its shoulders, on the other side of the hedge, but that's impossible. However, when I reached the location where it disappeared, well, there was no cows in the field. I watched it vanish. And I, when I went back to the area later to try and work all this out, I realised that there was a ditch and there was an old stream and a culvert there. And I wonder if that's what it used to vanish out of sight. Now, earlier we spoke about strange animal remains blamed on the moorland beast. And this account came in from a wild camper who was a regular visitor to the, to the area. We camped in between Beresford and Dubdale. And upon walking, waking up in the morning, we packed up and we started walking back to the roadway. At about 100 yards from where we were camping, we found the newly killed carcass of a sheep with its spine ripped out. We noticed it looked fresh and there was no smell but we never heard a thing at night and it wasn't there the evening before. There was no sign of a vehicle or an animal, no tractor, no tractor tracks, no dog prints, just the carcass missing its spine. Now the accounts we've just heard are only a few from the immediate area. The, we're actually in, if we use Millersdale as the very centre of the accounts, we're only within about two, three miles of Millersdale. So obviously there's much, many, many, many more accounts either side of it. They include some very strange ones, it would seem at first, but we have wood rocks at night in 2016. Now this is a lady who lives on the edge of a forest, doesn't sleep very well. She suffers quite badly with pain. So she's up at night and that's when she decides to do a cleaning. And she said, I'm just used to that. I live out there on my own and it's just what I do. And one night she's out there and she's tapping the dirt off something, the one of the 
tool she was using to clean. And there was a mirrored tap that came back as, say, she went, then from the woods came. So she tested it. She changed it up and went, and from the woods came. And she said it had happened on a number of occasions. I had a look on the map and I um, asked her to go out and look in the area and she did get some really decent shots of those, the set strange structure that I, we were showing earlier. Some very similar shots to that. We've also got accounts of knocks and whoops at Lynn Acre Wood. Now, the whoop really interests me because we don't really have anything in the UK that whoops or we shouldn't hit, be hearing that typical monkey noise. But Lynn Acre Wood, that's what they described, whoops and knocks that came from all around them. The Howler of Barlow Woods, that's a gentleman on a bike, on his uh, motorbike who stops off, goes for a wander off path, he hears some knocks and the knocks start to surround him. He come, becomes terribly frightened. He goes, lays down in the stream in the hopes that he got he get a view of what was making these knocks, but he never did see anything. But he said he was terrified and he'd never go back. Then you've got the bipedal figure and snarls of 1984, and that speaks for itself, doesn't it? I think it was a gentleman on the Chronic Stones that saw what he described as a dark bipedal figure moving up the shale with no problem whatsoever. And he'd also heard snarls outside of his tent. A quick moving biped in 2017, similar thing again, upright, moving, dark, all one colour figure that moves up the ravines or across the shale with no problem whatsoever this fluid motion to its walk walkers wood wild man ideal account came in from some um poachers actually they're up at an ideal time they're normally um lay down on the ground or hidden because what they're waiting for they don't want to be seen and, and we get a lot of reports of poachers things being taken from fishing nets Kill has been taken from snares, um, strange squirrel kills out in the woods where just the head of the squirrel has been crushed. We find deer legs in trees and they happen at a similar time of year in similar locations. Always male deer legs for some reason, very high up in the trees, nine or ten feet up. Now many people say, ah, oh, it's British big fat, but big, uh, British big cats. But where's the rest of the carcass? If it can pull it up 10 feet, a leg, it can pull the rest of the carcass up. And normally that's what a cat does. When we see these strange kills where there's no blood on the ground, they almost look like they've been dropped from above even. Or the, the wounds are incredibly, um, almost laser-like, let's say. Not a tearing or a ripping, but a precise cutting. I've heard over and over again the case where just maybe the tongue and the liver and the brain are taken from the animal, which are the fattiest areas. I mean, the, the liver especially, but you have to be careful with the lung and the brain of deer because if they've got any brain wound or anything like that, it can be passed on to humans. So whoever's taking this is incredibly skilled, let's put it that way. You don't see any walking around the carcass any dragging marks or anything like that some of these kills are just killed and there's nothing no meat taken from them so they've just been attacked um for, for whatever reason i think one farmer had 48 kills in one field alone i think fifteen thousand sheep kills were put down to dogs walkers dogs um, which is an extraordinary amount. Um, even if we, we factor in poachers, evil people, um, mistakes, farmers that, you know, obviously don't want that carcass on their land, so they tip it in the woods kind of thing. You, you put all of those together in a big pot, 15,000 is still a massive number. We get reports of fleeces that have bleached white bone within them wrapped up within them and pushed into trees almost sacred in a way or to be preserved for some reason we get reports from hikers up on the snake pass who smell the blood from the animal before they get there but what they find is a clean kill very strange things we get re the report of lights like it was mentioned in the very earliest report that i spoke about this light that leads you further and further into the woods we think we call them ghost lights for a number of years and fairy lights and will-o'-the-wisp 
but it's not that kind of willow low to the ground bluish glow wisp it's more of a circular orb type sometimes seen as orangey in color other people have described it as green or bluish and it's the kind of orb that you follow basically into the woods or you find it on your images when you get home later on we get lots and lots of reports of black figures that walk back into the woodland so they're not described as bigfoots or creatures or anything like that but solid black figures on one account there was four of them um then i think there was um I think it was at Scarfell, but don't take my word for that because there's so many accounts sometimes I mix them up. So what are people seeing? We can't put a name to it. And all lots of people do when they say it's definitely this and it's definitely that. We don't know. We think that it may be an ape-like hominid Bigfoot type creature. We think it may be a, whatever we're going to call it, dogman, werewolf, a wolver type of canid type creature. We could be completely wrong and we could be completely right. But what is there in between all of that and the actual meat of the thing is somebody people are reporting consistently over and over and over again, this tall, dark, crouched, hunched, muscular, athletic figure that moves through the woods and the crags like it's nothing at all. They come very close to towns. You see them rummaging in bins. Um, van drivers make reports of them. We've got reports from the army. We've got reports from the police. We've got reports from um, land managers, people who work the locks. You name it, we get reports. Lots and lots of dog walkers, lots and lots of hikers, lots and lots of people who are in areas just going about doing their normal everyday thing or what they like to do for leisure that see these as we described, hairy, upright figures. We don't know what they are. We use the word Bigfoot as an umbrella and we use the word Dogman as an umbrella. But there are definitely a multitude of incredibly strange things moving out there, whether it be day or night. And if you see them, please get in touch. Until next time, thank you everybody for tuning in. Good night. <laughs>